Testing, testing, testing. Sounds good to me. Okay. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today for to join us today for today's market recap. Today's uh, recap guest is the very popular Anne Marie Bain, and I was speaking with her just a little bit before, and she said she'd be talking about leaders and uh, not not good leaders, not good leaders. She's referring to stocks, not not um, individuals. So this is not going to be political. At any rate, we will be starting here in about four minutes. Make sure when you come on line today that you say hello. Uh, I see already we have Vincenzo from Italy. Ciao, Vincenzo. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, also, I'd like to remind you that this is being broadcast live. And if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and chat them in. And Anne Marie and Jeff Gibby, who is hosting, will answer them uh, as they can. Um, also, they typically uh, invite you to give them simple suggestions. So if you have any simple suggestions, anything you want to see or have them discuss, please add them. Don't hesitate at all. We really, really like to encourage people to really participate in our uh, market recap. And we don't want you to be shy. I can see there's already a lot of people here. And uh, don't hesitate just to say hello. Uh, ask a lot of questions and get involved. All right, a couple quick things. Um, Today's a big day for Metastock because in addition to the recap, which is about an hour, at 8 p.m. New York time, let me show you real quick. Oh, but, 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 sorry, just a second, let me get there. Let me get there, let me get there, all right. <laughs> all right, but there it goes. All right, um, that's not good either. Okay, so this evening at um, six o'clock local, eight o'clock Eastern, and if you're in Singapore, it's uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, the APAC Summit here starts, and APAC Summit includes the likes of Guy Cohen. It has a lot of speakers. Uh, Mark Belnick, uh, Hunter Smith, our very own Hunter Smith, he'll be hosting tonight. Gary Burton, uh, Tim Stryton, uh, and Daryl Guppy. Now, if you want to watch that, you can just come back here to YouTube and that would be great. But if you want to take advantage of these freebies that we're talking about here, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and log in uh, to metastock.com and go to the banner on top and register there so you can take advantage of these freebies. I'm going to have this website up all night so uh, you can use it to, as reference. Just go to metastock.com, uh, click on the big banner at the top and it'll uh, take you there. And you can use it as reference to see who's speaking when and also to register if you see something that the speaker's offering that you go, oh yeah, I want that because it's for free. All right, so I see now I've got Faisal. Hello, Faisal, I got Mark. Uh, I've got Vincenzo still, okay. So we're gonna start in about two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead, oh, I feel like there's something else I wanted to tell you. There is, give me a second. I wanted to point out that if you have not yet uh, gone to our, I mean, if you're on YouTube, if you're watching this, you're on YouTube right now, but I, I think you should really go to our uh, YouTube site and make sure you subscribe because we've got all this stuff, all these uh, past uh, webinars that we've done and past uh, instructive videos and some of them are live and some of them are recorded, but it's a lot of great information and I'm really sure that you would find it very useful. And then if you hit the bell, you'll hear about our live presentations, usually of which we do two to three a week. And they usually involve really great guest uh, speakers or we do it ourselves. We talk about Metastock, we talk about trading in general, we talk about in Metastock instructional videos. Uh, it's just a lot of great information and we know that you'll enjoy it if you give it a try. Okay, we're starting in about one minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and put myself on back on mute and make sure Jeff and Anne Marie are good to go.
uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying the summer. Uh, welcome to the uh, market recap. We're going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and start with a legal disclaimer. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the company software plugins. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to attributing and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So I said that as fast as I could today, Anne-Marie. That's, that's excellent. So I want to talk a little bit about our guest, uh, Anne Marie, uh, and uh, I consider Anne Marie a good friend of mine. She's yes. been um, partners of us for how long now? A oh, while wow, it seems like, and we we do a we do have an add on with her called Target Rich Trades, and um, I love having her on because she does such a great job. She always has like some interesting takes on the marketplace, and she's my She's one of my favorite guests. So but that's how I'll introduce you. Thank um, you. If people want to get in touch with you, if they want to look at your website, what's the best way you go ahead and let's do a plug right away. You can visit me at thetradingbook.com. You can find me on Twitter at Anne Marie Trades um, and on StockTwits. All right. And Very of course, good. you can find me inside of Metastock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have you on this. Uh, all, uh, every, every few weeks, I'm like, oh, we haven't done anything with Anne Marie for a while. And it is because, like, you're one of my favorite guests. You're so much fun to have on. Thank so. you. Thank you very much. Well, I think we know each other so well that there's a relaxed state about talking about things, and that that's that's always easier for me as a person yeah. to be relaxed around um, someone that I know and and uh, care for. So we are looking at the S and P five hundred right now. Yeah, we're actually taking a look at. Um, I think this would be. The spider? I think this is the spy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do the uh, S and P. And is that what is that? I and I always forget. Is it I and I and I X? I believe that's what uh, I, I should have let yeah. you keep it on the S and P because that's all, all I really look at anyway. But I believe it is I and I X. We can give it a go. Oh, sorry. Oh dot dot I and I X. Oh silly goose that I yeah. am. All right, let me try it again. Yeah. Dot I N I X. And the reason I want to start here is because something really interesting happened this week. Da, oh, uh, so that's not the right one. Uh, try SP, dot SPX if you want to look at, or we could just look at the S&P 500 because I I, um, yeah, I that's fine. That's fine. Let's. Yeah, no problem. We'll look at this. And what we really have superimposed is uh, target rich trades on top of it. And so here's something super interesting. Yesterday, the close of yesterday, we actually closed higher than in the uh, S and P. We actually closed higher than we have since anything ever happened, right? So this line up here was the actual test of the push through this edge. And then this is when our rotation started. So there is a thought in the, in the space, in the markets, and that is leaders always lead. And they will lead on the way up and they will lead on the way down. And so our leaders have been things like Apple, right? And so mm -hmm. let's, Apple is, uh, I know Apple's sitting right around here somewhere. I got Apple sitting around somewhere. Uh, yeah, chart, uh, it's uh, up to. Up to. <laughs> yeah, up yeah there we go. <laughs> Ta -da. Thank you. No worries. Right? And so yesterday, Apple also made a new high, but it did not hold on to that high in general. Now, it's higher still than it has been. But of the leaders that we look at, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, uh, who else? Facebook, Google, all of those. Apple is the only one that tested higher. Everyone else 
didn't. And so we have something that's a little bit of a rotation. And so let me, um, I know Amazon is here. I just saw it. I always have trouble putting these guys together. Uh, they're back here somewhere. All right, so let's look at Google. Look at how Google was really screaming and now it is well off its highs. So this is one of the, the leaders that has literally stopped leading. And as a matter of fact, they all have in general. And what is taking a hold is a movement back into small caps. Something else that we're noticing in these smaller formations from uh, the price action, I do want to talk about gold. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But here is Facebook, and again, it made a high how many days ago? One, two, three, four, five, six days ago, holding, but really not looking as good as it has been. So the moral of this story is there is weakness developing across the landscape. And so it doesn't mean that there aren't great trades floating around there. This one, of course, the Fed, um, we might have talked about this last time, but this is YRCW, one, two, three, four, five, six days ago. So could be just a holding, I'm trying to get this to pass. I forgot. Okay, you're off read. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> So what YRCW, the reason I started looking at it is because this is one of the first places that the Fed bought bonds related to these guys. They bought 800, no, they, they bought some gigantic number of millions in bonds and they did it, when did they do it? They did it right around June and it had a fade and held, and ever since then, it's been running to the upside. So you'll notice the trigger events don't look very solid. We have up and then down and then up, and I, my thought is because the rotation is not as clean as we would like for it to be, when we, when we put it back on a daily event, we can see that the price action's just been wild swings to the upside and downside, and now it's running. So if you wanna take a look at something that has a lot of runway, this is a chart that really has been terrible since 2019. So you might think there's a certain person that says, hey, a chart stays bad for a reason and that is completely valid so what we want to do is see if all the trapped buyers that brought themselves in around this area are going to bail or if they're going to hang on to the next step so i like this one we've been in here since it's been about two dollars and we sold some short puts there as well but the if it recovers, and it's a transport, so if it recovers, it's going to be something significant. So I, I definitely wanted to show this to folks because I think it's a fairly good chart in, in terms of, of holding its own. Can we see that for just a second? Um, where? Oh, on the a YRCW one. Oh, yeah. Just, let me, I was let me pop it back up. So if I was looking at this for like the first time today, um, I, I, I'd probably, yes. the way I would kind of be looking at it is I'd be looking for it to kind of break up above the the blue zone. Um, if it's just something that we're looking to get involved, is that kind of like what you're recommending then? So my thought about price action is the following. Traders sort of look at prices like stair steps. And so they will say, all right, that looks terrible. Let's see if we can hold 75 cents. And then they'll say, okay, now that we're holding 75 cents, let's try and push it to see if we can get to $2. And so they'll try to push and they'll fail. So you know 75 cents is likely. Try to push and they'll fail. So you know the 75 cents is likely. They try to push 
they hold, but then they fail, and you still think 75 cents is likely. So that's what's going to happen up here. They're going to chase it around enough so that price action really has to confirm because traders are either caught long or nervous about staying long. So they're caught long from over here and they've just said, listen, as soon as this gets back up to 475, I'm getting out of here. Right. And so they've held right. it for, mm -hmm. you know, however long since last October. And they're going to get out because they just have that long, painful wait through the edge. Then there's the person that says, hey, let me see if it can close above that level. But this is what I want to show you. When they first close above the level, there are going to be sellers that come in and they say, ooh, let's turn this into a buy trap. And we'll let them run up and then we'll let it fall. So I always anticipate this kind of motion the first time. If you notice, that happens a lot with a chart that's trying to bottom and turn around. So we'll look at it here again. Here it is. Closing over the top, very next day, falls to the ground. Holds for a couple of days, pushes up, falls to the ground. The goal is always, listen, if I come back and I can hold my test that is a big breakout zone, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to be able to hold it. And so that's what I think is going to happen up here. It's going to look just like one of these little messy patches. So you wait for it to pull back. If it holds the four, where we can see everybody sort of, no, it would be less than four. It looks like about, no, it's right about four, mm -hmm. okay. somewhere around there. If it can come back and hold that edge, that'll end up being the support zone. But I always anticipate after a chart's been way kicked in the teeth like this and it starts the run, it has these pockets of very messy formations. And the second they fail, you're to cut and run. Just wait for it to settle out at some better space. You know, just don't get attached to it. But I, I mean, I like it. And, you know, the Fed's pretty much bought it out of any kind of uh, difficulty from a dollar perspective. So, you know, as long as as uh, we can get it on the pullback, I think it'll be a nice run for a while okay. as we recover over the next, you know, couple of years. Yeah. Perfect. The, the, the one that you're very welcome, the one that I wanted to look at that's in here somewhere, but I can't find it. So I'll open it up again is Amazon. This one has been a screamer, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been doing really, really, really well. Oops, that is the wrong data that's sitting here. Um, edit. Delete all text and lines. All right. Take a look at this one. It really hasn't hit a high since the middle of July. And this one has been a very strong chart. The key that makes me not say anything bearish about this chart, essentially, is that it's still holding support. And as a big takeaway, if you're a trader and you're thinking to yourself, ooh, it's sitting below my moving average, it just broke that average, does that mean it's a short? Right. You know, when you think about things, a lot of people say, all right, you want to do the 1020 or the 820 or use two, ma two moving averages and you want one to cross. And then you look at it and say, all right, if it's below it, then I'm going to take a short. If it's above it, I'm going to go long. But I suggest this price is the master and commander. of Anything that you work on in the chart and your technical indicators will tell you the strength of price motion. So your first mechanic should always be, okay, I lost my moving average here, but if I look to the left, is there a region in the near past 
where everything got bought up? And the answer, of course, for this chart is yes. At the 3100 area, it got bought. It came down into this zone, and then they bought it up again. What's giving us trouble is now a lower high. So if you're thinking to yourself, wow, do I want to take this trade? You can look at it essentially here and say, wait a second, I'm caught in a box. And so until I break out and validate, that means I break out and I pull back and hold, or I break down and validate, I'm not going to be in good shape. And so that really is really what you want to look for. And so from a daily perspective, let me show you what that means in terms of validate. So here, this chart, it breaks out here and it runs like the wind right after earnings. My mouse is possessed, sorry. Um, and so as we look at that, we can see it breaking out and we're thinking to ourselves, holy cow, is this thing ever going to come back for me to buy it? And so you'll notice it breaks on a high note and then fades right after it gets a resistance line. Whenever you see resistance, <clears throat> how do you know resistance is there? Well, if you look to the day before, and remember these are inside of my range formation. So this green solid candle is really a bearish candle within the formation. And so this sits right here. Sorry about that, folks. Um, this sitting right here in this space, once it starts losing the high of the day before, you have to think to yourself, wait a second, who's doing that? Is it a group of buyers or a group of sellers? And sellers will push it down through the level and you'll go through the open and then the close and then you go through the low and then you look to the next candlestick. You can always see where pressure is building but once that pressure starts building if you have patience wait for the fade and then look for the look to the left and say okay where were my breakout zones i broke higher here on earnings and now it came right back into the edge and it gives me a shot to go into resistance if your chart goes into an old high and it starts fading you have to think about that and say, well, wait a second, do I need to take some profit? And that's always some, you know, if you are an investor and you're holding something for a long time, you don't really have to worry about these sorts of things. You just look for a pullback and any good pullback where the chart is down and people are screaming about how horrible it is, it's a great day to buy, great. But if you're a trader trading a cycle, you want to pay attention to resistance. You want to pay attention to the highs that nobody seems to get above. And when you get there, take some profit. You don't have to clean your position off, but you can take some profit. And this one, the range is getting tighter. This one's getting a little troubling. So for me, I'm waiting for it to break through its range so I can decide on another kind of bigger position. I got to go to Roku because uh, Roku is, uh, uh, yes, <laughs> and it's an incredible stock. They're doing a lot of really good things, but look, great stock. What do we do with great stocks? We wait for them to make savage pullbacks, stop heading lower, and then once they stop heading lower, we watch them head out of resistance and then we know hey if it gets out of resistance when it pulls back and retests that support zone i'm going to take it does it take a long time to do that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten days we have to wait to get back in the trade now look at what's happening here right this was this did really really well during the lockdown and now that things are easing, people are thinking, all right, maybe it's going to fade. And it keeps holding this edge. So we have something that might be happening. And that would be something that breaks very hard, at which point we know where it's going to come. It's going to come to the 135 area 
old resistance, new support. Once you let price be in charge of where you're moving, it's going to give you a really good roadmap of what to do. So if you say, you know what, I like this, I'm going to keep buying it on the pullbacks, you might want to have a little here, but not a lot, because old resistance that really gave us that last big breakout hasn't been retested yet. So it's a very likely path that it moves through that edge. Now, if you're thinking about things, you could go, wait a second, Anne-Marie, how about this breakout right here? It never came into this area. That's true. But what it did do was tell you, hey, I have no intention. If somebody wants to go below 100, have at it. But all the buyers were sitting there waiting to buy that round number. And that happens a lot. You think about those double zero numbers, 100, 200, 300, they'll press for it and then move backwards. So I think this one is also what do you want it to do? You want it to get above that moving average. You want that moving average to sit and begin to rotate. You want to print some candles above that edge. And then you want it to hold. I'm in the middle of a webinar. Thanks. So that, uh, that's why my phone's ringing off the hook. Um, so that is the process that you really want to work for here. If we spend one, two, three, four, five days sitting at this range event, something's going on. Buyers can't get it up over the top. Sellers can't get it up over the bottom. Look for the resolution, and then you can follow it in that general direction. So that's always a great one to talk about. Um, do you have anything you want to look at? Yeah, I, I had actually uh, I had actually pulled a scan today um, of the oh, target great. risk trades, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of get your take on a couple of them that triggered yesterday, and just uh, what you would right. think about them. Look at it. So the first one that I thought we would could look at was Pepsi P E P. Dot O. Oh, P V dot O. And mm -hmm. okay, we'll just do one at a time. All right. Uh, yeah. Or no? Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> However you want to do it. Yeah, let's okay. Just do it. Okay, so this one's very interesting. And this one's interesting because it's triggering in a very noisy patch, right? So that's the daily trigger event. And let's expand this. And from a weekly perspective, what we can see is the following. My thought is always go to the biggest charts that you can see and look at the areas where there was nobody that bought higher or nobody that sold lower. And those are going to be your main frames of reference, right? Maybe there's one or two guys here, but by and large, we're sitting in this box. Now, for the last couple of weeks, what we've done is outside candle, that's high, low, higher, high, higher, low, inside candle lower high higher low and then we have another outside candle of this is an engulfing pattern that gave us both a lower low and a higher high and we closed over the prior week so i the first thing i'll do is look at that and then if the trigger comes up for me on the daily and i've seen what the weekly formations tell me now I say, all right, if this is a buy zone, which it's showing me it is, it's saying to me, listen, I've got a buy point, and that buy point starts right around 137, right? Right there at that candlestick. So my thought would be on Monday, I would put an order in somewhere around 137.10 maybe 137.30, it, it looks like it closed at 137.56. My stop is pretty clearly defined on the higher edge, and that's 135. That's my old support edge. I see tons of buyers here, tons of buyers here, and then buyers here. So I like this. The question is the following. If it breaks out and it's been in a channel like this, What's it likely to do? 
And we have to look to the past to tell us where those target zones are. And for me, that would be right about 141. And I might take half of my position off there. I like to trade around positions. And so what that means is, let's say I have something simple like 100 shares. And I have 100 shares here. When it gets to 141, I have a sell order for 50 of them to be gone. If it pulls back and my old resistance becomes support and it holds that area at 139 and doesn't come back into my original event, so how will I know that? I will give it room to come into the area and then close above the area. If it closes above the area, I'm going to add back to the position. I'm going to look at 141, and then I'm going to look at the 143. And I will stair step up through the edges. Now, let's look at this, the flip side. What we've noticed is the chart undulates quite a bit. So if it moves all the way up to 141, and then I take half my position, and it comes back into my opening formation at 137, I will want it to immediately bounce or I will cover the other 50 shares at flat because my goal is I'm not investing in Pepsi because April to August has been an absolute no-fly zone. And so this is in a space where it's either do the work or see you later, buddy. For me, I have very little patience but if you're investing, again, this sideways action, it's like a base. And if it breaks out of the edge and then comes back and holds this congestion zone, you're going to be in really good shape to watch it try to recover. On the flip side of that, you can see that a sell zone came up right into support, closed the area, and then a buy opened up. And very often, when you look at these formations like this, you will see sell at resistance, buy at support, buy at support, sell at resistance. This just happens to have slope attached to it from a big perspective, and the weekly charts tell us we have some upside pressure. So I like it overall. If it loses the 136 in order to short it, it's got to fail it and then fail a retest because the overall grind is still to the north. And that really is how to tell if you're sitting in a trade and you want to say to yourself, you know, do I stay in here? Look at the big picture. And are people still buying higher lows? If they are buying higher lows, this is a chart that you can give a little bit of room to in general. But if if you are sitting in some place like this and you see them and they're selling the highs and then they keep heading lower, unless you're an investor who's going to hold it for the long haul, you would really want to get out of that once it got into the resistance zone. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Mark wanted to know if we could look at like silver, SLB or gold. Oh, TLB. perfect. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. Hey, Jeff. I like what is going. Yes. I'm starting. To, I'd also like to point out that Mark says he loves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think yeah, you should. We love you too. I like that. Yeah. Oops. Is it just SLV because it's an I, ETF? I think it is just SLV. Yes. Did that work? We'll do SLV and we'll do GLD. SLV. GLD. And you don't I have to am using GDX. Although it might work. Yeah, it, oh, uh, I don't. Sometimes I do a comma, and sometimes I don't. And I think oh, you know, okay. it, either way, it works. So okay, all right. Good. So yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah. All right. A couple go ahead. of things to think about here. Everybody's crazy about silver, and it ran up to the moon. And now it's sitting underneath a time series moving average that I used. And let me show you what that is. 
that is the 14 time series, right? But 14, 16, you know, it's not about the average that you use. It's about what the average is telling you that is the most important thing to consider. So we are going to see a dip in the metals over the long, over the short haul, and then they're going to move up again. And the reason for that is because of what's happening in this issue. And this is the 30-year treasury. And the 30-year tre, well, obviously that's not it. Um, what is the T, would I, would I try TLT.0? Uh, dot zero? Uh, let me, let me see if I can try Let's try. Yes, TLT.0 would give you the treasuries. Okay. So this is the 30-year treasury and it looks terrible. So, so let's think about the relationship between a treasury bond. If the bond price goes up, it means that rates are presumed to be going down. And look at what's just happened over the last seven days. Now we have heard from Powell. He says, no way, rates aren't going up. I'm gonna keep them at zero, right? Now, zero is sort of a relative term because, I mean, we can't go out and get anything at zero. It's always got to have some little ad additive sitting onto the edge of that. But the point remains the same. These guys are moving down. When this moves down, it tells us that rates are going to move up. And when rates move up, what we do is we see gold and metals go down. So there is an inverse relationship between rates and the metals, but the, the bonds are going to move in essentially the same place. So now we are looking at silver and silver has this really, I mean, if you bought it up here, you're like, what the heck is going on, right? There's just a measure of terror that's sitting because things are moving so sharply. Here it is, though. This is a weekly formation, and this weekly formation, we'll go simple, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, but when we hit that high, we began to lose heat. And so here's something that you can think about. When you start losing last week's high, you better look at last week's close. And if you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to lose anything in this chart, I'm only in here for a short position, you start losing the heat on the edge of the last week's close, you have to say, wait a second, somebody's selling. So when you look at this sort of thing, look at where they can sell. They can sell to the top of this edge. Oh, look at that, that happened to be the low. Isn't that interesting? No, happens all the time. Look at three candles together. Doesn't matter if it's the week, the day, the month. You're going to use it. And the second candle back, look for its high. See if it matches the low. If it holds above it, your chart's okay from a big picture perspective. But really, we're going to see some fading. So the next big bounce should not pass 26 because what the chart is going to do is give back some of these gains while the guys in the treasury space, which are mostly big guys, banks and stuff like that, are making a short-term bet that people are thinking that rates are going to raise and we're going to see something inflationary in the market. And so there are a lot of macro guys out there going, wait, you know, we're gonna have inflation. We're in a naturally deflationary state, and here's how you can tell that. Yes, we know milk is more expensive. Yes, we know eggs are more expensive, but if I went out to buy a computer today and I spent you know, $2,500 on it today, wouldn't I want $2,500 five years from now to give me 10 times as much power? Mm -hmm. I absolutely would, because that's the past, right? With the in the age of the internet, everything we look at from a technology space is deflationary. We want more and we want to pay less for it. And so there's a big argument, but it's coming up here and it's hitting silver and gold. So here is the thing 
if you say to yourself, I want to get involved, you can do something like a diagonal. If, if you're not into the option space, then don't even worry about it. Just put an alert and say, you know, I'm going to try to look at silver when old resistance becomes support. Some of you in at 25 are thinking, oh, what? It's going to 18? It might, right? It's just one of those things. When you buy a metal that is just insane on the upside, Jim Rogers, um, I think that's his name, he is super famous commodities trader. And he says, let me draw Fibonacci here. He says that all commodities follow retracement zones. Oopsie. They follow retracement zones. And let's do a projection. And those retracement zones should, for the love of Pete, I am so bad at this. I just look at my pictures most of the time. All right, so what it'll do is say, once a chart has a great big move, it's going to do a 50% retrace. So if I take this and I grab this right here and I move it to the top and I look for 50%, it's down here, almost at old resistance. So that's fairly valid. And so what you want to do is sit on your hands right now. The past, the time for buying these bounces and not taking them off immediately, in my mind, is past. Same thing for gold. You're going to see the exact same formation. They're failing, coming right down into the edges. This moved a dramatic amount. Look at where the edges came here. Resistance and support, very big, a tight motion out of here, and then a monster move to the north. We got to measure that Fibonacci again, and we will use, wow, oh wait, so big. Let's measure this wave here. Wow, operator error, it's me, not. Is it because there's another line up here? I don't think so. It that seems like you're... Fibonacci is not. I don't should think I... that, that, that's it. You should hold there it down. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this is telling us that we should go to 175 before you look for any more um, opportunities there. So I know maybe you don't want to hear that, but it is what gold does. It is what the metals do. And right now, we're getting ready to have ourselves some significant currency battles. There's going to be a lot going on jockeying here in gold and silver, but I think it's time to wait before buying again. Uh, well, you said currency dollar, battles. Right? Uh, that's actually a pretty good. Yes, um, with the dollar. Yeah. That's a pretty good segue because Sam wanted to know if you could look at a couple of Forex pairs, although he didn't say which ones he wanted to look sure. at. Sure. Absolutely. If you could tell me what to type in here, I will absolutely look at we them. We could look at Euro with EUR equals. EUR equals. And that's it. If you just do that, that'll pull up the Euro US dollar. Okay, all right. So for those of us that uh, don't know a ton about um, Forex, we always have to trade in pairs because one currency can't just be measured by itself. We left the gold standard in the 60s, I think. And so that's it's not possible to do that anymore. So we measure them against each other. And so we're measuring the euro against the dollar here. 
And we can see that it costs right now a dollar and 18 cents, uh, a US dollar and 18 cents for one euro. So that is what this means. As we are taking a look at this, the euro began an explosive move at the beginning of January. And this was because of the euro bonds getting traction and Lagarde and the IMF coming together saying, hey, listen, we're going to put together a measure that's going to bail everybody out of this problem while we are living in Corona land. And so what that's done is pull people out of the dollar and push them into the euro. Now, the question is, you know, what do we... <laughs> What do we think about this? And my thought is the euro is in a lot worse shape than the dollar. And so my suspicion is that this is peaking. So let's go backwards in time so that we can get a much larger picture. And let's see what we're looking at. Look at how extraordinary this upward pressure event was. The only other time we saw that was in 2017. And so we actually had another currency event in uh, 2017. And I'm trying to remember what triggered it. My brain on a Friday afternoon has turned to a bowl of cottage cheese. So I can't quite remember, but you can see what happened to the euro against the dollar just a massive run up and that massive run up faded and then we had another run up now this was when we um tried to uh raise the interest rates and just things went terribly awful in the markets and so everybody moved over to the euro once again so from a big picture perspective here we have a very ugly potential head and shoulders pattern. Now, could it be that the shoulder is down here? And the answer is possibly, but we have this edge and then really we have this zone right up here. My thought is that this trade is getting long in the tooth. So what would make me think this? All right, first of all, Higher, low, higher, high, really great. Higher, low, higher, high, really great. Higher, low, higher, high, but I closed just above the high. And this week, I had a complete inside candle where I had a higher low than last week, but a lower high. And so next week, the proof's going to be in the pudding. How does a breakout look? How does it look? We'll look at it every single time. Let's take a look here to see what happens when it breaks out over this heavy congestion. Always going to be the same. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's because I want you to realize that there's simplicity in the market if you look for it. And so here's heavy congestion, resistance, resistance, pop out, more resistance, pop out, pulls back to resistance, and it holds the support. So that's going to be your edge. For things to look really good sitting up here you're going to see resistance so what does it have to do it has to break out we're going to see sellers there first so you don't want to buy the breakout let it pull back and come in to support well where is that luckily it's close by if it doesn't hold here in this edge where everybody was clearly selling there's going to be trouble. You know that if it pulls back into this range, it's going to be bullish. And if it holds it, you're going to be able to run it up again for the next leg to the north. My thought is that this one is really extended. I mean, really, really extended. And so in the short run, of course, you know, in the short run. And that's what I'm seeing. All right, let's do one more. Uh, GBP sure. A U D. Oh, pound. Okay. Okay. GBP A U D. G B 
GBP, sorry, GBP AUD mm -hmm. equals. That's an S, Anne Marie. AUD. So we're looking at the Australian dollar against the British pound. That's right. Mm -hmm. Is this correct? I made a comment while you were talking earlier. You said Corona Land, and that sounds like the worst board game of all time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. All right, so the pound against the Aussie, that is a really, I don't know what happened to me. I just got hot from laughing there. Um, the pound against the Aussie. Okay, so this looks pretty interesting. Let's go to a weekly. If you if there's one takeaway, look at a chart as big as you can stand to see if you can tell what's happening relative to overall motion. And this looks like in a it's in a pretty landlocked state. Now the last time we were here, we bought, right? Volume was fairly good. This time we're here also buying, but what do we know about A break like this when it sits like this over and over it's going to pop up it's going to pull back an old resistance will become new support so interestingly inside candlestick that's the big thing that we really want to pay attention to so what does an inside candlestick you might hear the term consolidating when you hear that term consolidating, this is what's actually happening to price. It's compressing the smaller time frames, excuse me, smaller price ranges giving us these edges. So in this price compression, we see that we are holding above the close of last week. And so this looks pretty good. So if you were to take a trade here at this edge, your support zone is very close. So it looks like a pretty nice trade in the short order. What's the problem? The problem is this was a savage sell-off, absolutely savage. And so there are going to be people caught on the wrong side of this trade, and they're going to be biding their time, and they're going to say, listen, as soon as it gets to 185, I'm getting out of here. I'm not doing this trade again, da-da-da-da-da. So as usual that happens it pops up into this edge they sold it off now they're holding it all these guys people like me that go wait i'm gonna buy when old resistance becomes support and i have a moving average sitting underneath me so the weekly is clearly triggering a buy zone right so now let's go to the daily now that we have all our levels we go to the daily and we can see that the daily had a sell zone up here. But here's the thing. When you see any kind of formation, again, this is the, remember at the very beginning, I said, listen, if you fall below your moving average and you're thinking to yourself, do I go short? The first thing you have to do is look to the left and say, is there a line in the sand where nobody could buy over and now all of a sudden i'm over that line and when i come back to that line i bounced before it when that's the case any kind of sell order that you think you're seeing from any kind of platform it's just telling you it's going into support very next day it bounces so always you get under it says sell look to the left because you have to figure out where you're going and if old resistance has already proven itself as support it's going to try to hold itself as support again and get to the top of this box and as long as it holds your 181.50 you're in good shape and you can stair step up through the zone and just mark through your next area of, wait, where did everybody go but buyers couldn't go past? 
and you walk yourself up through a tray just like that. And you have to have some patience, right? You have to be a little bit of a cool hand Luke if you are stair-stepping through your charts. Great, thanks, Emery. I, I think that's a good You're place welcome. to kind of leave it at. Um, if I could just ask you another question, uh, through uh, sure. what is your kind of outlook uh, just in general for, let's say, through the election? You know, <clears throat> you say that you're cautiously bullish or cautiously bearish, or I'm going to say I'm cautious. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm cautious <laughs> everywhere <Yeah>. because <laughs> what I see, you know, I see so many people trying to pull so many strings. Right, everything mm -hmm. is up in the air. But again, the Fed has got the backstop. The problem is. How well can the Fed pump money into the places that it really needs to go, right? Because right mm -hmm. now, the Fed's pumping money in the places that already have a lot of money, right? So bought a bunch of Apple bonds and it, you know, it's just, there's the disconnect between Main Street and Wall Street. And so when, I think Main Street is still really suffering. And so if the Fed, and the folks on the hill would realize that they actually work for us and they say hey let's see what we can do to sort of help people that need help through this if we can get that buffer that we can limp along until things get better i'm going to stay cautiously bullish through the next three years if we have a larger disconnect between Main Street and Wall Street and we start seeing dislocation, more people with less places to live, more things going into default, more homes going to default, more cars going into default, those sorts of things where people, Joe Normal is really feeling the squeeze, I'm going to have to be more bearish. And if I'm looking at the charts, I can't possibly think to myself, wow, I should be bearish because it is going straight up. It is, I mean, literally, I've been trading almost 20 years. I've never seen a market like this one with so yeah. many yellow lights. And yet, <laughs> we still move up. <laughs> Right, I agree with that for sure. <laughs> I know that's kind of a long, I, I know I sort of like punted right there, but you know, it is, I'm just very cautious. I will look at savage dips and I'll say, you know what, I'm going to buy that. And when it gets to resistance, I go, I'm done. So my cycles have just gotten shorter and uh, I'm just really studying over the charts a lot more and trying to see if I can see through the fog. And so far it just says, pump the brakes right here. No need to be full on uh, invested. Okay. Well, thank you, Anne-Marie. Uh, so uh, again, the tradingbook.com uh, and at Marie, Anne-Marie Trades on Skype. And it's always great to have you. It's great uh, to be here. I love getting to see you. I love it when we talk about charts. It's just, it's fun. It really, I wrote really a couple is. down today. I'll let you know later. <laughs> <laughs> I said I wrote a couple down today. I'll let you know if I buy them later. Oh, oh, oh good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you All for right. coming, everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Thanks, Anne-Marie. See you. Bye-bye. Mike's on. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, so thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, very grateful to Anne Marine Bain, who's always uh, a great presenter, and we get a lot of great feedback from and She's always got some great ideas, and she was speaking pretty positive about the market, despite her comments that there at the end. I really enjoy how she looks at things and approaches them at all angles, but generally in a positive state. I very much enjoy that. Anyway, really quick, I want to remind you in about two 
hours and 35 minutes, we're going to go ahead and have the APAC Summit, which is a six hour, you must know this by now because I've been talking about it for weeks, a six hour marathon event. And all you need to do to register is go to metastock.com, which I've got right here, and just click on this banner at the top as I'm doing, not very deftly. Okay, and then you can just go ahead and register. now. Of course, you can just come back here to YouTube. Uh, that's fine with us. And that's where we record the event. So if you miss the event, you want to watch it later, then just come to YouTube and you can see the whole six hours on recording. Uh, but if you go here and register, you can, um, if I go here to the bottom, we've got these uh, freebies. You get a month of OVI uh, trade club, exclusive ebook, uh, custom indicators, 30 days of Belnix out. You know, a couple of really great freebies that you can only get if you register here. So I'm going to leave this up all night during the event. If you decide to come back and register uh, here at metastock.com and then just click on the banner at top, that's what you can do. Anyway, we hope to see you there in a few hours. It's gonna be a great time. So go ahead and get some dinner or breakfast or lunch or wherever you are and join us back in a couple of hours. Thank you so much and successful trading.